And now they've pooped everywhere. They pooped all over the car. I didn't think a little bird like that could poop so much. Everywhere. Shit. After an unusual wake-up call from the fairy wrens, we left Stokes Bay and headed along the North Coast Road towards the Western River Cove campground. Along the way, we wandered through a pine forest and actually pulled over to check out this really cool old tree. It was funny because at first we drove past it, but after doing so, Zebby and I just looked at each other and we both knew that we wanted to go back and check it out. Driving in the camp, we were surrounded by these amazing green rolling hills. They towered above us and everything was just so beautiful to look at. Western River Cove had a really nice feel to it, so we spent the next couple of days exploring the area. The next day, after finishing wandering around the rocks and the beach, we decided to go for a little drive to explore the other side of the huge green hills. I'm so glad we did, because we stumbled onto a moment that felt like heaven. We couldn't believe our eyes. The once green hills were lit up with a bursting colour of yellow from the surrounding wildflowers. I just couldn't help myself. I had to get out of the car and go for a look. One thing I love about travel is its ability to constantly bring you back to the present world. When you are surrounded by so much beauty in nature, it's hard not to be grateful for everything you have in life. One of our favourite lookouts in KI was at Scott Cove. This place made my heart happy. I just sat at the edge of the rock and looked out over the ocean and was even lucky enough to spot a seal jumping through the water. All I could think of was how fast it was moving and how beautiful this spot was. After a quick stop to smell the flowers at the Cape Border Lighthouse, we were pretty keen to head into the bush and check out some of the hikes. Which ones are they? Oh, it's so good.
for a hike? Excuse my French. It's a 7.4 kilometer return walk. We really enjoyed this one, as it was pretty cruisy and the landscape kept changing. The best part about it was that we went there in high winds and a huge swell. So the ocean was surging up the creek inlet, which made for some pretty funny moments. It started raining outside so we come over to this cave that we found to get out of the rain and the wind and it turns out it's pretty good. It's pretty sheltered. I'm going in the mouth. When heading to Remarkable Rocks, our day looked as if it was off to a rainy and gloomy start. But we couldn't have been more wrong. The weather held out and we had the best time goofing around at this spot. No. <laughs> This is a bad idea. <laughs> what have we learned today? <laughs> Don't try squeeze through rock gaps. <laughs> that are too skinny to fit. <laughs> it's like freaking 100 and whatever hours I'm going to have to cut my fucking leg off. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we nicknamed you Skinny, but you're not that skinny, mate. Right? Oh, surely. Surely I can do this. <laughs> the things I do for my husband. <laughs> Fits with that girl, oh, I knew you weren't, and you just are so adamant that you're gonna fit. What if I went up higher and through there? Just go back the way you came. <laughs> Have you not learnt anything? I'm free. Oh my goodness, everyone, he got out. <laughs> I'll meet you on the other side. Testing, one, two, testing. After a hilariously eventful morning, we were still in a pretty goofy mood as we wandered down to Admiral's Arch. Here you can find a New Zealand fur seal colony as you adventure down to have a look at the old rock bridge. enough to be able to watch the fur seal pups be super cute, sleepy and playful as they awaited their mother's return from sea. What are you doing? Here's your buddy. For our next adventure, we decided to head over to Kelly Hill Caves. easy for us. They would be perfect for any beginner wanting to experience what it's like squeezing through the cave cracks and crevices. Intense adventure caving expeditions will deck you out with harnesses, lights, helmets, and wetsuits as you explore the dark corridors underneath the earth. We then top the day off by trying to find one of Australia's more elusive animals, the platypus. The atmosphere along the platypus holes walk was so relaxing. All we could hear was the breeze rustling through the trees, the birds singing and the frogs croaking. The perfect sounds of a healthy ecosystem. Hike on the list was Snake Lagoon, and you can find it in the Flinders Chase National Park. The hike is 4.2 kilometers return and takes on average about two hours to complete. The hike follows the river all the way to the ocean where the two meet. But what is extra cool is that the river looks like a continuous stream of Coca-Cola. 
This is caused by the tannins leaching into the water from the surrounding bushland. It was fun to follow, but the best views was watching the dark coloured river mix in with the bright blue ocean. After squeezing through caves and a few long hikes, we thought it was about time for another ocean adventure. So we cut back across the island to Pennyshaw and jumped on Ocean Safari. If you're lucky enough to spot these little fairy penguins on Kangaroo Island, the best practice is to use a red light in order not to damage their eyes. Since we didn't have a red torch with us, we took extra care to keep our light source directly out of this little fella's eyes. We spent a couple days hanging around the campsite at Vivon Bay and went to the jetty to try our hand at fishing. We have just Check it out. We really want to catch a squid. <laughs> We're going to attempt to catch some squid at Vivon Bay Jetty. We've tried two times already around Kangaroo Island and have not caught a single thing. So hopefully we'll be a bit more luckier today. This is how you get down. So we had one more day to fill until we shipped the troopy back over to the mainland. And yep, you guessed it, it was pretty action packed. Can everyone see it? That's a good indicator of that residual damage that I mentioned before. 
if I was to release Kylie now, I, I would be very surprised if she made it a week because of that injury. The max I can push her is three times a day. She can fly. We kicked off the day by checking out Raptor Domain. It's an environmental educational rehabilitation centre located at Seal Bay. Every year they care for orphaned, injured and sick birds of prey. But unfortunately not all the birds are able to be released back into the wild. So they train them to educate the public on their natural behaviours. Is it dead? Oh no, I'm going to finish it off. Ah, that was a remarkably well timed snake, wasn't it? <laughs> now the question is, did we get anyone today? For an extra 10 bucks, you can have the opportunity to hold Australia's largest bird of prey, the wedge-tailed eagle. There was no way I was going to miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And all the money raised goes back into the centre to help injured wildlife. I have to admit though, having this bad boy on my arm was a little bit intimidating. So after our birds of prey show, we've decided to go to Little Sahara for a sandboard. Warm up, we had to go on the smaller hills, but it wasn't long until we ventured off to find some of the bigger sand dunes. Attempts after attempt after attempt. We tried to get it right until finally. If you came to prove, there's no reason to prove. Now you've got yourself something funky. As our time on Kangaroo Island is coming to an end, we decided to do one last sea lion tour from the Seal Bay Conservation Centre. The tour was very informative and takes you all the way down to the beach where you can get pretty close to the resting sea lions.
To say we had fun on Kangaroo Island is an understatement. There's just so much to do, see and taste, and we couldn't leave without enjoying a few extra goodies before hopping onto the ferry. Last afternoon on Kangaroo Island, but we know how to do it right. Pizza, beer and wine. Head stuck. Come up over the top. There you go. <laughs>